Mars is a really just inhospitable place. Mars is a death sentence for human life. There's really no way to sugarcoat it. It has no personal vendetta against us. But just like space, it is simply not designed to support human life. The only reason it seems to be a target for exploration is because of the assumption that it might be the only possible option for any type of planetary exploration in our lifetime. Let's look at why colonizing a planet that doesn't want us is a waste of resources, time, and human life, and why we should put those resources into making Saturn's largest moon, Titan, humanity's second home instead. Titan was discovered to be wrapped in gas in 1944, when Dutch-American astronomer Gerard Kuiper viewed it with his new telescope. Then, Cassina released the Huygens probe through Titan's atmosphere, and scientists could finally see the surface of a world unknown for many years in detail. For humans and most animals, Earth's atmospheric composition and pressure are kind of vital when it comes to staying alive. People talk about how far Mars is from Earth, but all that wouldn't really matter if Mars didn't have a suicidal combo of atmospheric composition and pressure. Its composition of 95% carbon dioxide, 3% nitrogen, 1.6% argon, and 0.4% trace gases, including oxygen, combined with its surface atmospheric pressure of 6.35 mbar, makes it impossible for humans to breathe Martian air. If you tried to breathe without an oxygen-supplying spacesuit, you would suffocate, and because of the low atmospheric pressure, your blood would boil almost immediately. Titan, on the other hand, has an atmospheric structure similar to Earth, as it's composed mainly of 94.2% nitrogen, 5.65% methane, and some carbon-rich elements. And before you point out the obvious absence of an oxygen percentage, Titan has oxygen embedded in other forms, including its subsurface ocean of briny water and dissolved salts. Oxygen can also be added to the nitrogen-rich atmosphere to create breathable air, while nitrogen serves as a buffer. Titan's atmospheric pressure has been likened to being under 16.4 feet of water, just some 50% higher than Earth's. Therefore, breathing is way easier on Titan than on Mars, and it won't boil your blood. In fact, you wouldn't need to wear a pressurized suit on the surface. Talking about suits, they will not protect you from the intense cosmic rays, which are the energetic particles from distant supernova that you will encounter if you are on the surface of Mars a consequence of Mars' thin atmosphere and lack of magnetic field. Although it is still not well quantified, it has been suspected for years that this strong radiation has the potential to cause cancer. However, research conducted recently pointed to brain damage as a possible more serious risk. It showed that particles like iron nuclei, which travel at nearly the speed of light, are present in this radiation and can cause brain tissue destruction. Any form of increased and continuous exposure to cosmic radiation will cause long-term hazards to living things. These include severe illnesses like cancer and cognitive impairment, not excluding memory deficits, depression, impaired decision-making, and anxiety. Simply put, no one would have a long life under the constant bombardment of GCRs. Hence, it is probably fair to say we aren't ready to send humans to Mars for a visit, not to mention a long-term stay. Earth's defense system against these cosmic radiations is its layer of a magnetic field, which extends tens of thousands of miles into space. Each invisible layer stops some portion of the radiation from entering the Earth's atmosphere. For those that escape and get into Earth, the water in the atmosphere is the large filter that keeps destructive radiation out. The sources of these radiations aren't limited to the stars within our immediate solar system but also come from unknown sources outside our solar system. Since Mars lost its magnetosphere about 4 billion years ago, it now has an induced magnetic field that can't protect humans from radiation. There is the idea of building what is similar to underground tunnels or tubes for humans to live in to be safe from this radiation, not just for transport, but to live and spend all of their time underground. Underground shelters will be difficult and expensive to build, it would also lack ease of expansion. Astronauts would face huge problems when it comes to restocking, manufacturing, and just normal daily living. That has so many problems we can't even begin to unravel them. Why go through that when Titan's atmosphere already naturally protects its surface from lethal radiation? 
One, because of its denser atmosphere, and two, because of its magnetic field. Titan is very cold, no doubt. Its temperature is negative 291 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 180 degrees Celsius. However, because of its dense atmosphere, instead of pressure suits, humans just need warm clothes and respirators. And thanks to the Cassini spacecraft's flybys of 2007, we know that Saturn's magnetosphere protects its moons from solar winds, hence no influx of cosmic radiation. Titan itself spends most of its time within Saturn's magnetosphere, described as an oblong region of ionized gas, or plasma, surrounding the ringed planet. The plasma is made up of material jettisoned from the moon Enceladus, which spews icy geysers into space. Although because of this relationship, it was difficult to know if Titan had its own personal magnetic field, the Cassini flyby would give an answer to the difficult dilemma, and it happened when Titan was out of the control of Saturn's magnetosphere. Scientists noted that Titan's atmosphere does retain a memory of the magnetic field of the plasma that surrounds Saturn. This memory might last for as long as three hours. In these three hours, however, Titan remains completely exposed to the solar rays. Then, thanks to the Moon's atmosphere's momentary magnetization, it may be shielded from significant losses because it is still encased in a shell of magnetic field lines. The combination of the dense atmosphere and Saturn's magnetic field does make up Titan's defense system against cosmic radiation, so shelters don't need to be underground. They just need to be filled with warm air that contains oxygen and nitrogen, and the resources for construction can be sourced from the limitless resources extracted from the surface. Now, we're talking huge spaces, freedom of movement, and not scurrying around underground like rodents in our home away from home. Naturally, our present home supports plant life, the very foundation of food on Earth. On Mars, plants can't survive. Mars's regolith, which is its soil, is simply crushed rock. It has no nutrients. It has a high pH due to the presence of salt percolates and an absence of organic materials. A thin atmosphere that can't provide the essential nitrogen and oxygen that plants would need. The same atmosphere can't protect plants from losing their gases, which leads to their deaths. Its inability to protect, combined with a weak magnetic field, also leaves plants exposed to high levels of radiation. And if you argue that radiation can't possibly kill plants, solar flares will simply waltz in to complete the job. Then there is the matter of water. Thanks to the atmospheric pressure, which is at or below the triple point of water, water exists only as ice or gas. Even below the surface of Mars's polar regions, water ice is frozen in place, while occasional briny water is observed flowing down some of Mars's elevated landscapes. Elon Musk made a joke about forcibly terraforming Mars using nuclear weapons. Although some academics see the logic behind it, it remains a joke. Titan and Earth are presently the only known places in the solar system with abundant amounts of surface liquids that go through a complete hydraulic cycle. Titan has rains, glaciers, rivers, lakes, and seas filled with hydrocarbons like methane and ethane, which remain liquid at temperatures of negative 179.5 C instead of water. Actual water on Titan is frozen solid, both on its surface and in rocks underground, because temperatures are two times colder than the coldest ever recorded on Earth. Scientists even speculate that Titan may have had active volcanoes that erupted lava, liquid water, instead of molten rock. Describing the surface of Titan, NASA says it features dunes that could easily be confused with those of Namibia, a country in southern Africa. Those mountains of sand in Namibia rise up to 1,000 feet, 300 meters. On Titan, the tallest dunes found appear to be upwards of 300 to nearly 600 feet, 100 to 175 meters. The dunes are composed of darkened hydrocarbon grains, or pieces of frozen ethane and methane, large enough not to be mistaken for fine sand. Other simple similarities to Earth exist, like the fact that big liquid bodies sculpt Titan. However, these liquid masses, some of which are as large as those on Earth, are composed of methane rather than water. Just like hills and valleys on Earth, the gas moves across the surface, eroding rocks along its course. The similarities don't just end on the surface. The sight of clouds in the sky above Titan's surface may make one feel at home too. However, they occasionally flood Titan's surface with methane rain rather than water. 
The abundance of Titan's hydrocarbons is not just a waste of space. These basic molecules include the carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen atoms that make up each of these hydrocarbons, which can be broken down into their separate parts, and are so versatile they can arrange themselves into complex structures. These molecules are the fundamental components of life on Earth, and are referred to as organic since they include carbon. Combining these molecules with nitrogen, both of which can be easily found in the atmosphere, produces products that have you take a deeper interest in organic chemistry. This potential is what makes Titan special and fascinating to scientists. Scientists have made it known that benzene is also part of Titan's atmosphere. This has increased the curiosity of researchers who want to know what other molecules exist on Titan and whether they have any resemblance to those that may have initiated life on Earth. Connor Nixon, a planetary scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, has even said, Titan is unique on our solar system. It has proved to be a treasure trove of new molecules. Recent research already provides one evidence of these new molecules. Scientists discovered cyclopropenylidine, C3H2, in the upper layers of Titan's atmosphere, where there are fewer other gases. By high-sensitivity spectroscopic observations, using a radio telescope observatory known as Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, ALMA. According to the head of the ALMA search, this finding truly shocked him. When I realized I was looking at cyclopropenylidine, my first thought was, well, this is really unexpected. The molecule, which contains both carbon and hydrogen, was found while they were checking through a spectrum of unique light signatures their telescope captured. This has provided even more insight into the chemical makeup of Titan's atmosphere by the energy its molecules absorbed and emitted. What's more fascinating, though, is that cyclopropenylidine can react easily with other molecules it comes into contact with and form different species. So it's no surprise that some researchers have found cyclopropenylidine in small collections, like in clouds of gas and dust that float between star systems where it exists in isolation. If it dwells in isolation, imagine scientists' surprise when they found it on Titan in an atmosphere that has a lot of chemicals that can easily react with it and form a completely different species. Researchers till now have no idea why cyclopropenylidine would be present in Titan's atmosphere, but not in any other atmosphere. With these, Titan has fuel for both people and plants. In growing plants, for example, nitrogen can be combined with methane and ammonia to become fertilizer and the foundation of an autonomous system. We must add that the position of Titan makes the idea of a self-sustaining colony equally viable. Saturn's system is home to about 146 moons, billions of icy particles, and Saturn itself. Titan's proximity to this abundance of other bodies in the Saturnian system presents great economic and exploratory potential. Moons nearby like Enceladus with its subsurface water ocean and molecular hydrogen, Mimas with the possibility of ocean, Tethys, which is basically water ice, and Rhea, another ice moon which may contain carbon dioxide and oxygen. You could go back and forth about the fact that Mars is closer for the first human outer space exploration, which will be the only argument it has going for it anyway. But we also forget that traveling to Mars depends on transfer windows, which happens every 26 months. Since Mars and Earth are always in motion, we will always be trying to hit a target that's in motion, and whenever we miss, this spacecraft becomes stuck in a solar orbit until its resources run out, and we get to try again in another 26 months. And we already know what we are going to meet on the barren red planet. But with the policies in place by authority agencies like NASA, the pace of technological advancement has been sped up by the competition between commercial companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, and others, all of which want to build the fastest and most efficient spacecraft. We can reach farther distances that offer better opportunities, like Titan, quicker becomes easier. And before you say all this is just a pipe dream, NASA is already laying the foundation for the future with its Dragonfly mission, which has been undergoing refinement for some years now. Under the auspices of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, for the agency's Science Mission Directorate in Washington, Dragonfly is the fourth mission in NASA's New Frontiers program. Dragonfly's goal is to characterize the habitability of the moon's environment, investigate the progression of prebiotic chemistry in an environment where carbon-rich material 
and liquid water may have mixed for an extended period, and even search for chemical indications of whether water-based or hydrocarbon-based life once existed on Titan. In a more direct form, Dragonfly is going to get samples called tholins from Titan, amongst other things, of course. From the science lead investigator for Compass Lab, Joff Landis, on what tholins are, there's a lot of thinking that these sort of molecules are the building blocks from which life started, because they must have been present in the early solar system. And to achieve this? The mission designed a fresh approach to planetary exploration, employing a rotorcraft lander to travel between and sample diverse sites on Titan for the very first time. In fact, Elizabeth Turtle, Dragonfly's principal investigator, emphasized the pioneering efforts of the mission and its team, saying, Dragonfly is such a daring endeavor, like nothing that has ever been done before. Nicola Fox, Associate Administrator of NASA's Science Mission Directorate at NASA headquarters in Washington, has praised the mission team, saying the Dragonfly team has successfully overcome a number of technical and programmatic challenges during this daring endeavor to gather new science on Titan. The mission has been given permission to move on with Phase C, or final mission design and fabrication, in 2024. After the submission of the 2025 President's budget request, the agency plans to formally affirm the mission, possibly by the middle of 2024, along with its entire cost and timeline. By 2028, Dragonfly will begin its journey to Titan, and is the ideal outpost and a stepping stone to many other locations in the outer solar system. A permanent facility on Titan would be excellent, just as Stephen Olson, lead of the Compass Lab and principal investigator of the NIAC study confirmed, as far as an accessible world that's most like Earth and has organics, Titan really is the place to go. We would like to hear your opinion. Mars or Titan? Let us know in the comment section. Thank you, and don't forget to like and subscribe.